Hi, and welcome to Kidney Plugged In. On today's show, we introduce you to Kidney Foundation volunteer, Anik Lim. Anik is one of the organizers of the Warm the Soul initiatives in the Okanagan region. And this initiative distributes warm socks and woolly toques to kidney patients on dialysis in Kelowna, Penticton, Vernon, and Rutledge. Anik joins us to talk about this heart, head, and foot warming initiative. And since February is Heart and Stroke Awareness Month, in our Did You Know segment, we highlight the link between kidney disease and heart disease. And get ready to mark your calendars because we're going to bring you up to date on kidney events that are on the radar screen in 2021. So this and so much more is coming up next right here on Kidney Plugged In. I'm so pleased to welcome back to Kidney Plugged In, somebody that many of your viewers are going to be familiar with when you see her. She's a kidney transplant recipient, I think 22 years ago she got her kidney transplant and really has been a Kidney Foundation volunteer extraordinaire, being involved in so many campaigns. And today she's on the show to talk about a new initiative in the Okanagan area that she is organizing and coordinating. I'm so pleased to be welcoming back to Kidney Plugged In, Anique Lynn. Hi, Anique. Thanks for having me, Barb. I'm so happy to be here. Uh, talking about the Warm the Soul campaign is something that uh, really means a lot to me. It reminds me of before I had my kidney transplant, my feet were always cold. And uh, I remember a friend gave me a big, thick pair of warm socks for Christmas. And I literally remember that to the day because I wore those socks out till they had holes in them. It made a big difference in my life. So I'm taking the name Warm the Soul. There's a little play on words there for this game. It's a bit of a pun, right? We're warming, we're trying to uh, reach the kidney patients, the dialysis patients specifically that are going in center in hospital, warming their soul, but also warming the soles of their feet. <laughs> Uh, that's, you know, that's terrific. And it's actually so apropos for February, right? It's the month of of uh, warming hearts, you know, Valentine's. It's good timing. It's cold out. Everybody's got cold feet. So you were saying, actually, this idea came up because of what you personally experienced yourself. That's right. Um, so I have had my kidney transplant. Uh, for 22 years um, and I remember pre-transplant I had a very best friend and he surprised me with big thick socks for Christmas and I was surprised I guess it's something that you you really get used to having after a while um, I probably mentioned it oh my feet are like icicles I've got ice cubes in my feet whatever the case was and he thought to get me big thick warm socks because I was confused at first and I said why would you get me these giant socks and he said your feet are always cold and I said you're right my feet are always cold and so another volunteer in the South Okanagan uh, Teresa Atkinson um, and Vivian Short uh, she's they both participated in uh, giving out the socks with me over the past few years. I started it in 2018 and um, Teresa and I used to deliver mandarin oranges and candy canes once a week for the month of December to all of our dialysis patients. And so I thought, you know, I love this idea, but they're peeling the candy cane, they're putting it in their mouth, they know it's from Kidney Foundation, but long term, how can we get them to remember who they got it from? How can we get them something that's going to last longer than that two minute mandarin orange? And uh, I work at, an, um, like at a sports store and I get a great discount off of retail pricing and I saw these socks and I thought, you know, I sell a ton of these because a lot of people have cold, cold feet. And um, I thought, you know, how can I make it affordable? Made a proposal to the Kidney Foundation and said, you know, can I buy socks for every patient rather than candy canes and mandarin oranges? And so that was approved and that's where it started. I thought, you know, warm the soul, but not only that, warm your feet, warm your, warm the soles of your feet. You know, just hearing about this, it's, it really is a genuinely thoughtful, um, 
initiative. It really right. is a great example in a way of paying it forward, right? This happened to you all Yes, years yes. Ago. I know. experienced it myself. Um, that being said, you know, I saw kidney patients after the fact because we went into the hospital and hand delivered them and said, you know, I want these people to realize that I'm not only a volunteer, but I'm also a patient. Like, look, okay, I've never done dialysis myself, but I have been sick. I was just about to go on dialysis when I got my transplant. In fact, they wanted to do a session of dialysis, um, but being young, naive, uninformed, uneducated, I really didn't know how critical it was. I really didn't know how sick I was. This is a long time ago, and uh, the machines are very intimidating. Um, you have to sit there and kind of almost not move very much because on one arm you have the dialysis going on and on the other arm you've got your blood pressure cuff to make sure that you're you know not going to be sick in some way and you're hooked up to the machine you can't get up and walk around whenever you want so it's it's a hissing machine it's intimidating especially when you're not familiar with it Anik I know knowing you um you're from the Okanagan area Penticton I think right right um, Tell us about where this initiative is taking place. Where are you going to be delivering? So for the past few years, we've been delivering to Penticton Regional Hospital. And this year I thought, you know, we're really missing a lot of patients, especially in the Okanagan, because that's where I am. And uh, I thought, can we expand our project? And so when I made a proposal this year, it wasn't just 40 some odd socks. I suddenly need over 200 pairs of socks. But that just goes to show you how many kidney patients are out there, um, most of them waiting for a kidney transplant. Uh, so that being said, it's eye-opening. You know, 10% of the population has kidney disease. So don't be surprised when I give you those numbers just for our little area. Uh, and there's a lot of people who are doing dialysis from home, so it's not even counting them. So we've expanded our project this year to include Penticton, we're also going to Kelowna Regional Hospital and we're going to Vernon and there's also a dialysis center in Rutland and so everybody's going to be getting socks. And one thing that I was made aware of that I, you know, I'm not diabetic, I've not lost a limb. Of course, it didn't occur to me before. Um, people who are getting socks who are amputees are not going to get use out of our socks. So we have this year started including toques into our program. And so we made sure that we get the nurses in advance to go around and see, would you prefer a pair of socks or would you like a toque? What a great initiative, Anika, and I love the addition of the toques this year. It kind of got kidney patients covered from head to toe. Welcome to Did You Know? Did you know that February is Heart and Stroke Awareness Month? And did you know that there is a correlation between heart disease and kidney disease? You see, your heart and kidneys are two important organs in your body. They work together to keep you healthy. And when one is affected, the other one is too. In other words, your heart can affect the health of your kidneys and your kidneys can affect the health of your heart. When you have heart disease, your heart may not pump blood in the right way and your heart may become too full of blood. The backup of fluid when the heart is not working properly makes it much harder for the kidneys to function efficiently and this can lead to kidney disease. Damaged kidneys may release too much of an enzyme called renin which helps to control blood pressure. So this increase in renin increases the risk for heart attack, congestive heart failure and stroke. In fact, kidney disease and heart disease share many of the same risk factors, including diabetes and high blood pressure. So please remember, having kidney disease can directly affect your chances of developing heart disease, and having heart disease can directly affect your chances of developing kidney disease. And now you know. 
just talking about your personal situation because you are a kidney transplant recipient uh, and with COVID-19 that has meant an adjustment to your life as well. You're not working. You're one of the fortunate people that has a very loving spouse to support you, but you also recognize the fact that that's not always the case. Um, and you're doing something about that. You're from home and you're coordinating this in order to provide some support. Uh, you know, for other kidney patients. That must be a very motivating feeling for you in getting involved with something like this. You know, it's um, not only about this year specifically, it's not just about reaching out to the patient and saying, you know, Merry Late Christmas, here's your socks, here's your toque. Um, you know, when I started this initiative before, I never once thought that I was going to put, if you are really, really low, Here's the number to the crisis line. But it's on there because we're very cognizant that uh, the isolation can be very hard on one's mental health. And uh, it's very important, you know, for myself, it's really important to have at least one phone call or one Zoom call or uh, just like a messenger video chat a day because that lifts my spirits. And so for someone who um, doesn't necessarily have a spouse, call your kids, get the grandkids on video somehow. I think a pet is really good for the soul because when you get home, they're so happy to see you most of the time, <laughs> especially a dog. But you know, if you have a really loving pet that wants to sit on your lap, that's always so good for the soul too. Um, it's so critical to reach out to your family uh, to your caretakers if you need the extra help and we want to let them know that the Kidney Foundation is there too to support them through our programs like through peer support, Kidney Connect, Kidney Calls, uh, which is a new thing that we started this year too. Um, I think that we were ahead of uh, a lot of charities quite honestly because someone posted for another charity and I thought we've been doing that for three months already. I'm not doing it myself, but we have other volunteers that are doing the initiative with calling patients and making sure that we're checking in and making sure that they're doing okay. Hi, just calling to see how you're doing today. Oh, that's great. And so giving them the option, can I call you in a week? Would you like me to call you in a month? Uh, what can I get you? How can I help you? And it's so critical to encourage kidney patients, um, their caretakers, their family members to really reach out and get the help that you need because it's not just about the patient because kidney disease affects families. When you have a, a family member living in your home who has kidney disease, it affects everyone. And this is another great example of just hearing that voice or receiving that item or something that says, you know, we're here for you. It's a small token. You were saying there's the message on the, the socks as well. The message we're trying to get across with our sock delivery this year is to be particularly cognizant of taking care of your mental health, making sure that you're reaching out and getting the help that you need. When you're at the hospital getting your dialysis treatment, make sure to tell the nurse that you'd like to speak with a social worker make sure to tell the nurse if you're having a problem and get the social worker to help you in that way or reach out through the Kidney Foundation and um, set up what you need. You know, set yourself up for success. There's a light at the end of the tunnel. This will come to an end. Um, you'll be able to visit your family and your friends soon. And this has just been so interesting and we touched a little bit upon your journey, but I'd love to hear more about your personal journey with kidney disease. Can, can you stick around for a few minutes and join us a little bit later in the show? I would love to. So please stay with us because Anik's gonna join us later in the show to talk about her personal journey with kidney disease and her kidney transplant. March is Kidney Health Month. The town of Princeton, formerly known as Vermilion Forks, is celebrating in a big way. Fundraising events will take place to help commemorate Kidney Health Month and support the fundraising legacy of Cara Lewis. Eureka, the everything store, a staple in the Princeton community, will be the center of all the special events. 
there will be a 50-50 draw, several door prizes, and for a minimum donation, customers will be given a Sydney the Kidney cutout to hang in Eureka's storefront window highlighting their name or to send encouraging messages to those living with kidney disease. So if you're traveling in the Similkameen region, stop by and say hello and support the wonderful fundraising events of their dedicated group of volunteers. For further contact, reach Sandra at EurekaEverythingStore at gmail.com or Randy at randy.spensley at kidney.ca. Way to go, Princeton, the little town that did. Can you imagine losing most of something without realizing it? Over time, kidney disease can destroy up to 80% of kidney function before you notice any symptoms. Talk to your family doctor to see if you're at risk and need to be screened. It could save your life. Welcome back to Plugged In. I, I couldn't let you go without sharing your personal journey of kidney disease that led to transplantation. Can you talk a little bit about that with us? Yeah, certainly. I was diagnosed, finally diagnosed at 18 months of age. So I was a sickly baby. You know, the doctors were telling my mom, oh, she has a, an ear infection or you know, whatever they thought it was. We're talking 1976, 1977 at this time. And so um, my condition specifically, you can see on a prenatal ultrasound. However, again, going back to 1975 when I was born, you know, it's not something that was necessarily done or something that was seen. So um, it's a birth defect that I have. I was finally brought uh, to Sick Kids in Toronto. They finally um, realized what was wrong and they were, they did a surgery to try to repair my ureters. However, it was not a successful surgery. So I'm very prone and very, um, I'm delicate. I'm very, very sensitive to urinary tract infections. And so that being said, I'm just extra careful. Um, you know, there was a year where I think I had more than 10 urinary tract infections. And so for myself specifically, um, when I have a urinary tract infection, I'm down for the count. Like I, I cannot function, I cannot go to work. Uh, it's, it feels, I describe it as an attack. It's very painful, very uncomfortable. Um, so with every urinary tract infection that I had growing up, it managed to, um, it causes scar tissue. Every time you have an infection, it causes scar tissue. And so my native kidneys don't look like nice, bubbly kidneys. They kind of look like fists. Um, and so I was able to get my kidney transplant in February of 1999 from live donor, who is my dad. And so I'm 45 and my kidney is 70. and the Kidney Foundation is ready for it with a host of exciting events already lined up for you to participate in. Here's a sneak peek of what's in store just around the corner. Mark your calendar, March 9th to March 11th. That's the date of the free virtual forum, Living Your Best Life with Kidney Disease. This three-day forum will commence on March the 9th and conclude on World Kidney Day, which is Thursday, March 11th. This program, hosted by the Kidney Foundation of Canada, BC and Yukon branch, has been developed in partnership with people living with kidney disease, and it will bring together patients, care partners, health professionals, and researchers who will share information to help educate, empower, and inspire you. Email kidneyprograms at kidney.ca to get on our virtual forum invite list. The Virtual Kidney Gala is happening March 13th, and you're invited. 
The ninth annual Kidney Gala will be held virtually this year, and it will raise funds and awareness of kidney disease, risk factors, and organ donation. 2021's theme is A Bright Future, and it will highlight the empowering impact of technology in keeping us connected to support our well-being and ensuring strong and healthy communities for all. This gala experience is sure to be unique and innovative, and as always, it will include an inspiring program, and it's broadcast live directly to your home, and will be hosted by none other than Vancouver's man about town, Fred Lee. It costs about a thousand dollars to send a kid to camp. Not sure what to expect? Well, think virtual live telethon. The Kidney Gala will feature an online silent auction, entertainment, inspiring speakers, a wine wall, a raffle, and door prizes. The live stream link will be sent to ticket holders before the event. And with our virtual format, we look forward to connecting with even more of our kidney community nationwide. To learn more about the Kidney Gala or to purchase your tickets, visit kidneygala.com. And on June 7th, join the Kidney Walk and show kidney patients that you've got their back. Yes, the virtual Kidney Walk is back. And this year on June 7th, participants from all across BC, the Yukon, Alberta, the Territories and Saskatchewan will walk the block in their community. Your support is needed now more than ever. So show kidney patients that you care and take the first step by registering today at kidneywalk.ca. So I'm going to ask you before you go, if you have any words of wisdom, anything for other, for kidney patients, transplant recipients, pre-transplant out there that you might want to to share some parting words on thoughts as they everybody faces these challenging times right now. Yeah, um, it's really hard when you have an invisible illness and you're that one in 10 Canadians that has kidney disease, you're going to get that comment from strangers, family members, your loved ones, they'll say it to you, but you look fine. But you know what, kidney disease is um, it's a really good looking disease because I make it look good. You know, I get that all the time. However, you do it too. You know, like if you're a kidney patient out there and you get that, that's because you're living your life. You don't have a choice. So um, be gentle on yourself. Don't push yourself over. Um, don't take it to heart when people say that and uh, get them information, you know, if anything, educate your family and your friends of why you're not feeling good today or why, you know, pre-transplant, believe me, I was taking those two hour naps every day. And when I got home from transplant, I said, okay, I'm gonna go for a nap. And I laid there with my eyes like saucers. No way, I'm full of energy, I can't sleep anymore. So that being said, if you're on dialysis right now, or if you've just been diagnosed, or you're a veteran like me of kidney disease, um, you know, any situation that you're in, encourage your family members and your loved ones to educate themselves, help them educate themselves, and make them realize that, you know, you're living life to the best of your ability, um, but you're not gonna feel great every day. It's just not possible. We all have our downtime, right? Let's see, so kidney is a... These are my grandpa's kidney stones. They're very precious. Kidney is a bone in your back that helps you turn. <laughs> mm, I don't know, to be honest. They don't know kidneys are vital, do you? Get the facts at kidney.ca. I want to thank you for doing such a genuinely thoughtful, wonderful initiative in your region. And thanks for coming on Plugged In and sharing it with us. It's been so great to see you again. And, uh, you know, congratulations on, on the success of this initiative. Thank you so much, Barb. I want to make sure to include my team. I can't do this by myself. 
Number one, um, you know, I've known Teresa since the first day that I attended my very first kidney walk. And uh, so Teresa Atkinson is another volunteer and another kidney patient. And also Vivian Short, she's the one who created the, um, like the Kidney Connect, calling patients. Um, I had Vivian over the other day for about three minutes. We took pictures with socks and we literally clink, clink socks like champagne glasses. We were six feet apart. You know, Teresa and Vivian and I, we do two Zoom calls a week and half the time we're talking about Kidney Friends Circle, that's the new project on Facebook, and the other times is they're helping me with writing the letters and, you know, I can't do this alone. And so the South Okanagan chapter, Vivian, myself and Teresa all had a big part in creating this project this year. <laughs> and Nick, thanks again for joining us. It's been my pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thanks to all the car donations made to the Kidney Car Program, the Kidney Foundation of Canada can help all these people with kidney disease. Those donations are instrumental in providing them with care and invaluable support. When you give your car to the Kidney Car Program, it will be towed for free and recycled or resold. You'll also receive a tax receipt of at least $300. To continue to improve the quality of life of thousands of patients, we need your car today. She is a Kidney Foundation volunteer extraordinaire. Oh my. Today she's talking about with us here today. Or can I try that again, Owen? Yeah, okay. and actually I interrupted you. Yeah. Okay, you got the whole body covered from head down to toes. Okay. Right. <laughs> That's a blooper. <laughs> Anik, welcome back to. <laughs> <laughs> oh my! Oh <laughs> no, my! Yeah, you, know, you just don't pee. You yeah. have no ability to pee. So let's say that you drink a six pack of beer because I know you so well. Just kidding. <laughs> you know, just people can be so. Yeah. I hate that. Oh, you pun. Know? We're with kidneys. You're in the. <laughs> 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 Urine.